Hello, reefing friends. Welcome back to Craft Aquatic. I'm Matt G. A few weeks ago, I took a short drive to Connecticut to go visit the nicest eight-foot-long mixed reef aquarium that I've ever seen in person. I found John in a well-known reef forum. I sent him a message that I'd like to come see his setup and possibly featured on the Craft Aquatic channel. So here we are today. I'll let John take the lead in this video as he talks us through his setup, the livestock, and some valuable thoughts on reefing. I think you're going to really enjoy this reef tank tour, so let's go inside and check it out. So I think one of the most amazing parts of this hobby is that, you know, we're able to take an ecosystem that, first off, you wouldn't certainly find, you know, in the Northeast here, um, where we are, um, let alone, you know, um, in, in, in my living room, and basically have a little slice of, you know, the Caribbean or the tropics, you know, in, in your living room. Um, and, and have a combination of, you know, not only fish, but corals that, you know, not only are thriving, but growing and, and actually, you know, being able to kind of share that, you know, with other people. Um, I think that's, that's something that's really um, unique about this hobby. Um, I think, you know, a lot of other hobbies, you don't, you don't necessarily have things that are alive or, or thriving, you know, it's more about, you know, people may have photography, you know, a, a hobby in photography or sports or something like that. But here, you know, we're kind of the keepers of, you know, live beings um, and, and the ability to have them thrive and do well and then be able to enjoy them and share them with other people, I think is really special about this hobby. I set this tank up really to be a focal point for the room. This tank was set up in March of 2022. So basically the tank sat in the garage for 15 years, you know, just taking up space. Because it's a standard 240, right? So it's eight by two by two. And then, you know, when I wanted to build this room, I'm like, all right, well, this is the time. And when I build this room, I'm gonna definitely put the tank in here and this and that. And that's, that's kind of how it, this, you know, it finally got out of the garage into this room. <laughs> And it wasn't in bad shape, you know, it's an acrylic tank, so, you know, but it had, it had some scratches inside. But, you know, when it was empty, it was easy, right? Because I could take, I took my, my drill, I took my buffer, I took the, you know, acrylic paste and made it like brand new, you know? I moved this thing in by myself. You know, I put it on a dolly, I rolled it in, my son was here, we lifted it up on the stand. You know, I mean, the, you know, the lightness factor is, is a major driver, but a lot of people don't want acrylic because they do scratch easily. As I, I get wet, dry sandpaper, and, 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 and I sand it with, with, everybody, with everything in there. That, that, you can't do that with glass, you know? That's the one, that's the bad thing with glass is that, you know, once, once something scratched, for the most part, it's done. So I would, if I had to characterize my tank, um, it's a mixed reef, obviously, but I think it's probably more LPS dominant. Ghanis are my favorite. I think you can probably tell that. Um, I just think they bring the, you know, the best of both worlds. Um, I think I've got probably 35 Ghanis in there. Um, so there's a good number of those. Um, got my share of softies, you know, Cinellaria, Toadstool Leathers. Um, I, ha I even have, you know, the dreaded uh, Green Star Polyps. I have Xenia, um, I have a bunch of Zoas. Um, and then, you know, I have, I have some SBS, um, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing elaborate, nothing overly, you know, expensive, just uh, some acros, probably more monoporas than anything. Acros, you get all the pinks and the reds and stuff. I mean, that is the one nice thing. Um, and I love the colors of, of, of acros and stuff like that, but I don't know, like I look at the tank, there's no movement. I, 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 li I like the movement, I like some movement, you know what I mean? It's like colors are one thing, but that's what I like about, about like yeah, adding some of the softies and some of the LPS, there's, there's movement there, you know? I, I like variety, you know, and if, if, if people ask me what, what do I like, you know, what, how do I decide what I add? If I like it and add, it's different and I, it adds diversity, then I, you know, I give it a shot. So I have seven of the Ecotech Radeon 8, 8, XR15s. And then what I've done is that I have a combination of the pros and the blues. So I don't have, I don't have one, I have four of the blues and then three of the pros. I have seven of them over an eight, over an eight foot tank, 
But if I wanted to, let's say I only had four, like I could, this actually, I can slide this up and down the rack if I wanted to, because they're just, they're just, you know, they're just hanging in there. And then, because I, you know, if I want to get into the tank, especially to do maintenance and stuff like that, when you have lights that are hanging over, right, that are eight inches above the water line, it's tough to get in there. Yeah. So I, I have, I, I, I have what's called, it's a, it's a tubular shade motor. So it's actually designed for shades on windows. So, you know, if you want to automate them. Um, and then this is bicycle derailleur cable. It's stainless steel. So it's for bike, basically bike brakes. If I want to, want to raise it up, I can raise it up. For alkalinity, I use, uh, I don't do car sodium carbonate though. I do sodium hydroxide, um, which gives you more of a, you know, it, give, it gives, it's fine for alk, but it also gives you the pH bump as well. Um, and then for calcium, I do calcium chloride, um, you know, same thing. And I keep, I have both in, you know, five gallon jugs downstairs, um, you know, on, off a dosing pump. And I, do, I dose it every hour and the, I forget the actual amount I do. I think I, I'm, I, think I do around, uh, I want to say 140 milliliters per day for alk and then 105 for calcium, I think. Um, magnesium's always 1450 to 1500. And in fact, recently Randy Farley said like, you know, they don't bother testing your magnesium. And I don't, I don't bother, I don't even test magnesium anymore. I do alk and I do, I do alkalinity, I do calcium, um, I do uh, phosphate and I do nitrate. I use reef crystals. I started out using um, Instant Ocean. Um, that's what I had always used. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't really feel that like there's that much of a difference in the salt, especially if you're going to add supplements anyway. Um, but then I, same thing, uh, the reef crystals was on sale, so I bought that, and I just decided to, you know, to stick with that since then. I see a lot of guys doing this stuff now, the reef Red Sea AB Plus stuff, and uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, my colors I think are good, and. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm also fearful about adding more stuff and then creating like, you know, some sort of algae problem or something, you know. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, no. So it's like, as long as things are, if things are looking good, like, you know, why mess with it? Uh, virtually every piece in here, I'm just looking around, every piece in here started off as a typical frag. Um, you know, what you would normally buy from an online retailer, from someone selling. Um, the only exceptions are probably the torches um, because obviously you can't, you know, you can get those, but you know, you can see there's multiple heads and for the most part, I got most of those with single heads. So they've, they've also grown heads. Um, they've split a couple of times. I fragged them a couple of times as well. I've lost, I've lost them too. You know, I, if, if I had to say a challenge for me, um, I, I found that the euphilias in general are kind of the, 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 the pickiest, um, you know, I, I, like I've had it where I've, I've lost a head or two for no explainable reason. My parameters were, you know, were perfect, yet a head died. I almost feel like it's kind of their way of kind of surviving, like they get rid of a head and, they, and then they grow another one or something, I don't know, but, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's they're, 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 they're a little bit finicky at times and, and you know, sometimes there's no good reason behind it. And so I, I'm saying, I've, I've come to the, 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 the conclusion that, you know, sometimes things die and, and you can't find the reason. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a good environment, but it's not nature, right? And so maybe there's something that we don't un even understand why, you know, why something dies. Same thing with fish. You know, you could have a fish one day is fine, next day you see him dead in the bottom of the tank. Parameters are fine, no diseases, no spots, and yeah, things, things die. You know, so that, that's one of the things that, you know, when I first started in the hobby, I think I kind of got, you know, I, I used to get kind of bent out of shape. Oh, why did this die? You know, I almost wanted to do like, you know, a, a post-mortem on the fish. But now if it dies, and luckily, I mean, I haven't had, you know, many fish die, but when they die, I'm like, eh, whatever, it, it died, there's something, you know, it was, maybe it was old age, maybe it got sick. The tank is a, a standard 240 gallon. So it's eight feet by, eight feet wide by, you know, uh, two feet high by two feet deep probably a little bit over 300 pounds of rock in there, um, mostly live, uh, live rock. It's KP Aquatics, it's, you know, from the Florida Keys. Um, I think it's, I have slightly over 300 pounds of it in there, um, you know, and it was actually, I got the premium and I got it where they shipped it in salt water. So, and then I have my sump downstairs, I think it's 45 gallons. So 
I think kind of the, you know, the net water volume is around 250 gallons overall, you know, between the tank and the sump. The substrate is the Carib Sea Live Sand, the special grade. The return pump is a CJ9 SDC, so it's a DC pump. I, I like the gyre because that's all I, that's really the only, th you know, the only um, flow that I have aside from, you know, with the returns and stuff like that. And I just have it where it's like, you know, it, 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 it's anti-synced. So I have anti-sync happening, you know, from one. So one, one goes up to about 70, the other one goes down to 30, and then they switch. You know, so it creates a nice kind of almost like wave-like thing. I get a lot of, you know, kind of random flow, which is kind of what you want. Uh, as far as tangs, I have a hippo, purple, gem, naso, and powder blue. Rasses, I have a melanaris, a gold nugget, a yellow chorus, and a blue star. Antheus, I have two red bars, two dice bars, two fathead, two bat bimac, and two pink squares, and one leer tail. Angels, I have a Watanabe and a Swallowtail. Chromis, I have, I have one green Chromis, two Springery Damsels. Um, and then I have a bunch of miscellaneous. I have uh, two Blue Jaw Triggers. I have a Midas Blenny, a Mandarin, Royal Grandma, two Dartfish, and a Flame Hawk. I do frozen Mysis, frozen brine. Um, I do old fashioned flakes, um, and I do pellets. So a little bit of everything. Um, for the tangs though, um, I feed, I feed them romaine. The blue jaw triggers will eat it. I have the wrasses will eat it. I mean, it's like, you know, um, even the, the antheus will eat it. If a piece comes off, they won't pick at it, but if like a tang rips off a piece and it's floating, they'll eat it and stuff. So they, they all seem to like uh, the romaine for whatever reason. A couple of months ago, I just, just for the heck of it, I added a big ball of Kato into my return. Um, so I've got that I've got that going as well because um, I, I mean I do I do use GFO to keep my you know phosphates in check and so I wanted to see if I could you know maybe keep uh, both the nitrates and phosphates a little bit more in check by by using some more natural means. I generally change the water changes once a week and so when I do the water change I change out the filter socks at the same time. Skimmer is a Dell Tech twenty sixty. Um, Again, you know, one that I bought um, off of uh, another Aquarius on V3, so used. I don't use any type of, you know, controller. Um, you know, I, I've, I've automated uh, a lot of the tank, but it's not, you know, it's, it's done in my presence and I have to push the buttons. I, I don't like the idea of putting all my eggs in one basket with a controller, you know, because if something goes wrong, um, you know, that, that could spell disaster for the tanks. I have to fill up kind of the uh, the alk, you know, the alk um, and calcium jugs and stuff like that because you know, but they last pretty long. I I, got, I bought these, you know, these five gallon um, jugs off Amazon. They're actually made for like making beer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you know, and I fill five gallons, and it lasts it lasts a long time. My GFO, I, I swap my GFO out every six weeks because it, it basically exhausts after about six weeks. So I have to swap that out. I've been chopping up some of the Kato and t tossing that because it, it has been growing down there quite well, actually. I grow my own Fido and pods as well down there and I, 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 com I combine it into one. I started out with separate and then I was like, well, but if pods eat Fido, then why can't I just put the pods in the Fido and just grow both together? And that's what I do. One thing that I like the most, I think it's just, I think visually it's just, I think it's beautiful. You know, it's, I think it's a living piece of art. You know, some people will put, you know, expensive pieces of artwork in their house. Um, if you look around here, I don't have those, but I would consider this to be my expensive piece of artwork. Because, you know, you know, as we know, right, reef tanks are not cheap. The equipment's expensive, even if you are buying, you know, used. Um, the, you know, the living animals and corals in there are also not cheap, um, you know, so, um, but it is, you know, it's, I think it's, you know, it's beautiful. It is, it is a, you know, a living piece of art in my view, and that's what I like about it. If you've made it all the way through the video, you'll probably want to check out John's Reef of the Month thread. The forum reached out to him shortly after I did with a request to feature his well-deserving reef system. We even took some pictures for the article while I was there filming. I'll leave a link to that right up below.
Again, thank you for checking out Craft Aquatic. There are dozens of informative and entertaining reef related videos on the Craft Aquatic channel. So be sure to check those out, hit the thumbs up and subscribe, which really helps out this channel. Please do leave some comments below. John or I will answer any questions you have about this beautiful reef system and I'll catch you on the next one.